for a long time, there was a question of um, designers thinking that if they willed, designers and engineers thinking if they willed their uh, learning ideas on people that um, they would behave in the way that they thought they would. And so little photos like this, where you see people in LA using the defunct newspaper stands that don't really give people their news anymore, but serve as great um, coffee tables, uh, work much better than the sort of designed uh, area where people were supposed to sit and drink their coffee. And so this sort of observational analysis, trying to understand how people actually use the built environment is a real key element of our work. There was a study that came out a few months ago in the Lancet British Medical Journal indicating that the way we design our cities, things like residential density, intersection density, public transport density, number of parks, these things, these physical elements can invite a certain type of behavior up to about 90 minutes more of physical activity. And they control, that was like 15 different cities, six different continents, so controlling for climate and age and economic um, background, design matters. They have this incredibly important transit corridor, it's about a mile long, connects New Union Station down to Civic Center in the part of the city. Um, iconic design, right? Revolutionary in the early 70s, IMK. It's a big deal uh, that this was put in. Free mall shuttles go up and down the street every day. 55,000 people take that bus every day. It's a huge success, actually, from a pure transportation standpoint. The problem is, is that it's underperforming in like every other possible way besides just transportation. So these beautiful designed IMK pavers weren't meant to have a bus going over it every 1.5 minutes. So those are falling apart. Uh, there's a lot of antisocial behavior. The retail environment there is underperforming. And so we've been working with the city to try to just test stuff out. Let's see what happens if we reroute the buses. When we rerouted the buses on these weekends, you had one and a half times more commercial activity on that street. You had more staying activity, more people, almost twice as many people uh, spending more time uh, along 16th Street. These cases, I think, highlight some challenges that I think are really important paradigm shifts. Um, the first one, which blows me away, is we talk about when we talk about um, taking carbon out of infrastructure, right? Reducing CO2. We oftentimes talk about benefits and co-benefits. And from us working with this stuff, the benefits is the carbon, right? But then we talk about the co-benefits, which is all the stuff that people care about. So that's like making the city attractive and stimulating business and keeping energy dollars local and improving public health. So we like little graphs like this, <laughs> right? But people don't care. People like want the co-benefits. So what if we inverted that, gave people lots of, co of benefits, and the co-benefit was the carbon um, reduction? Something to think about, right? And it's not just about departments, it's more about places. My sort of challenge or question is, you know, the street is probably our most prized public asset. The third of all space in cities, about 80% of all open space in cities. So we, can we collaborate around the street? Can, can streets actually be the great equalizer to address some of the issues that we have in society? If so, it would demand for us to sort of take off our different departmental heads and begin to talk about how we collaborate on things like, yes, we need infrastructure, right? But the furnishings and operations and public life and programming, those can be collaboration efforts between different agencies, much more rooted on improving that street for people and less about individual agency goals. The final challenge is this big one I started at the beginning about connecting people to opportunity. And the thing I'm excited about this is not just including more people in the discussion, actually. I think that big issues need the good ideas and talent and capabilities of many more people. And we're shooting ourselves in the foot by excluding a large portion of the population by not bringing them in as constructive, uh, as constructive partners. So what that means is that we have to move beyond just this idea of like walkability and bikeability and promoting landmarks into much more, something that's much more about some of these metrics I mentioned at the beginning, about inviting for public life outcomes. It's not just building a park or a high line, it's creating a place where people can spend time outside and build social connections. 